Hey everybody, welcome to Average Guy Opinions. I'm your Average Guy, John Corelli. Uh, this is episode 167, and it's very calm here in the western suburb of Wheat Ridge, uh, of the Mile High City of Denver, and uh, the weather is cooled. It's a very comfortable, it feels like 75 to 80 degrees compared to what it was yesterday and earlier today when it was nearing 100. So I'm just glad <laughs> things are feeling a little more June-like right now, and uh, hopefully hopefully uh, the planet won't catch fire. <laughs> anyway, uh, I want to talk about um, this article I read, um, and I, th I found it very interesting, but I also knew of this. It's called uh, My Journey to Pride. As a black man, I am excluded from the gay community. Uh, and I'm, as you guys know, I'm very childish, so the funniest thing about this whole article is it is written by a man named Charles Blow. <laughs> B-L-O-W. Sometimes uh, facts are funnier than fiction. Anyway, uh, he, I, he sounds like he's around my age. Um, he uh, um, fell, I, I don't want to say fell into, but he became part of the gay community, according to this article, after having being, um, I don't know how you put it. I guess you're living a lie, maybe. Uh, he was a, in a straight marriage, uh, you know, married to a woman for many years, and then uh, he started exploring bisexuality and then just came to grips with the fact that he, he's a homosexual man. And in the article, he, he speaks a lot of um, the difficulties of being a gay man or a black man in the gay community. Actually, so this kind of surprised me because I've seen biases on both sides. I've seen uh, a lot of black members, especially, you know, macho members of uh, not only the white community, the black community, Latino community, often uh, condemning um, homosexuality or, or, or transgenderism or any of the, what, what are we going to call uh, out, anything out of sight, outside of heteronormative relationships and lifestyles. Um, there are a lot of people obviously against that, um, and they're not only white. And there's an irony I've always seen there. It's like a lot of people are, yes, my race, my this, my that, but then they're going to hate other people for having, uh, what else, I don't know what, what you'd call it, a non-heteronormative lifestyle, a, a, an alternative lifestyle, we used to call that. I think it still is alternative, <laughs> how do I want to put it, technically, I guess? I mean, when you look in terms of nature, we have to be heteronormative to reproduce, but outside of that, there are, we've seen, um, animals have shown us that um, there are homosexual animals there, or at least animals that will sexualize with uh, their own gender, uh, their own sex. And so nature is even proving to us that we're not necessarily just meant to be hetero and reproduce. And especially as humans that uh, even... Here's the thing. We always, uh, I feel bad for gay people because they often have to defend their their sexuality which they shouldn't have to that's their business i don't care do what you want um but they often say well i don't feel like i cho chose it and i think they do i think tr truly people that are gay or have alternative uh, sexual lifestyles i'll call it that just for simplicity um i think they do feel like they don't have choice but what if they what if it was a choice why should it matter if, if we're in the freest country in the world why not if you won't choose to be gay what are you doing wrong? <laughs> you know, if you choose to uh, identify as a man and put on a dress, who are you hurting? You know, that's that's kind of my view on it. Do what you want, as long as you're not hurting anybody. You know, who cares? So, <clears throat> so, um, <coughs> geez, excuse me. So, one of the uh, quotes that I thought was pretty uh, telling in here, and I've always felt this, and I've seen it on both. Like I said, I both sides. I've seen gay racists, and I've seen uh, black people and Latino people and even Asian people bigoted toward, and of course white people, <laughs> bigoted towards um, uh, people of different uh, alternative sexual lifestyles. Um, this is going to be quick. Uh, one of the most depressing realizations about queerness is that the racism in it is just as strong and stinging as the racism in the general population. Indeed, it can be worse, as people who themselves have been marginalized and mistreated become blind to the notion that they have their own biases. So I am quick to remind them. Yes, the hated can also hate. And for black queer people, this is a, this means a double demerit. So he says it way better than I did. I said it, but not nearly as eloquently. He's an author, so he's way better at writing than I am. I thought about it, too. I remember uh, 
there was some TV show I watched a long time ago. Maybe it was Hill Street Blues, one of those kind of gritty shows, if I remember correctly. And there was a black gay woman on there, and she, she already, and, or maybe it was even a documentary. Wherever I saw it, she made a great point. She's like, I got three strikes against me. I'm black, I'm a woman, and I'm gay. I'm fucked. You know, it's like, can you imagine? I mean, I've got it all for me. I mean, it's, it's, uh, I, I got it pretty good. And I, this isn't a brag. This is just a realization. Like, I always thank my mother uh, for letting me know, hey, you're a white male living in the United States of America, and I'm straight. I got it all, baby. <laughs> it's pretty good. And, and now, and then since I'm, you know, Italian, Sicilian, and I uh, got some Southern uh, European in me, I can now claim the off-white status, which, hel which helps sometimes <laughs> when you want to, don't want to necessarily be be uh, identified as a white man. Uh, so I, I, I had some thoughts about this. I, I had a mutual friend years ago. Um, he lived next door to my best friend and we would, you know, we, we hung out and we partied and I, he was gay. He was very conservative gay though, which um, I'm going to do a couple of, throw in a couple jokes that I've told about this guy because uh, I've always said a, a conservative gay man uh, makes about as much sense to me as a Jewish Nazi. They don't, the conservatives do not have your best interests at heart as a gay man, even if you're fiscally conservative and otherwise culturally conservative, which doesn't really make sense. Um, yeah, why why would you be part of a, the Republican Party, which isn't going to fight for you at all? Um, in fact, they're, they're going to do the opposite and be against what you stand for and even who you are. But that's the way he was built. He was a closeted gay person. He lived up in Evergreen when he was a kid, and he, he didn't come out. You know, he's like a little bit older than me, so in the 70s and 80s, <clears throat> you didn't come out <clears throat> in very white, very rich, very mountainous, very conservative Evergreen, Colorado. He just didn't. Um, and he was a he was kind of a pampered kid too. I, I you know I, I got to know him a little bit. But uh, he said some things that were pretty telling. I remember when uh, Hurricane Katrina happened, it was 2005, and he just had an ignorance on culture and even, in a way, in, to me, life in general, where uh, we were talking about Katrina, and it was kind of embarrassing for my race because most of it was like a circle of white people just talking about it. And most of the people, except for me and like one other guy, it was like eight or ten of us just saying, well, why didn't they just drive out of there when they saw the thing coming? Why didn't they do this? Why didn't they do that? It's like they're fucking poor. They don't have, they can't just jump in their SUV and take off to uh, the hills. You know, these are dirt poor people. This thing came in a hurry. Um, you know, I mean, when you're poor, you can't just go up to your cabin in the mountains because you don't have that. And you can't drive just to Alabama or wherever you think is closest because you don't have that. I guess Mississippi, actually. Anyway, so these people were really saying terrible things. Uh, it was just kind of embarrassing. Like, these people were completely responsible for their own lot. And uh, when it was, in fact, uh, the federal government did not take care of the levees that broke down, we, people just blew that off. They said, well, well, they should have insurance. I go, do you have renter's insurance when you're living in an apartment? And if you have no, no other money um, and you got mouths to feed, do you really give a shit about getting insurance? And then, and then they twisted the argument into saying, argument, as I like to say, argument, into saying, uh, well, they're going to bankrupt the insurance companies. And I go, how? If they don't have insurance, the insurance companies are loving that. They don't have to do any payouts. What are you talking about? The people that don't have insurance are bankrupting the insurance companies. It's like arguing with my dad sometimes. It just didn't make sense. Um, and then uh, I do have a joke about this uh, this guy because one time, and this is true, uh, me and my friend and uh, this guy, we were doing work in front of there. Like I said, they they call them sister houses in uh, in Denver sometimes. They're identical looking Victorians uh, down like the on the First and Broadway area and other areas of town. And so their houses look identical. They're twin houses. And so they decided they were going to... Um, do the tr what I call the tree lawn, the area between the sidewalk and the street. Um, they're going to landscape that, la landscape that all the same, and I helped them with it. And uh, you know, towards the end of the, this is where the joke goes. I said, you know, towards the end of the, uh, towards the end of the day, you know, you're not exactly in your best frame of mind. You've been working hard. It's hot. Um, you're kind of getting tired of each other and tired of the job. And uh, I said, and so you don't use your nice manners when you're talking to these other guys. And so I said, I said hey, get me that shovel, will you? And I swear to God, he said this. He goes what color am I? Because I did, apparently didn't say please or ask him nice enough. And so in the joke, like I said, it was all the joke. Um, I go, I don't know, racist faggot, is that a color? <laughs> so that was my, the point of the joke is to say, you know what, if you're going to be a racist asshole, then maybe people have a right to call you a faggot and be a bigoted asshole towards you. Maybe you see how it feels. Now, uh, having said that, I've literally told that joke twice. It's hit once and failed once, so 500 batting average on a joke, I don't know. 
There are times I want to try it again, but I know that word is not in favor right now. It should never have been in favor, to be honest. But if I'm using it in, in the context of a joke that kind of calls this guy out for being a racist, I don't really see a problem with it. Uh, let me know what you think. Uh, talk to you guys soon. Let me know uh, if there's anything you'd like me to talk about. All right. Hope you're having a warm summer, but not too hot.